Well, praise God. Hallelujah. This is Pastor Evangelist Andre Otis. Praise God for revealing the truth. Amen of the Cross of Christ radio broadcast. Well, we welcome you here this afternoon. Praise God. We do thank God for you as always. Praise the Lord who has taken out of your time this noon time to hear the gospel. Amen. Praise God of the Christ gospel of God concerning, amen, praise God, his son. And um, praise the Lord, I want you to know that you can call 225-746-0222 or 225-473, um, praise 6022. Praise God, there are those that are there uh, waiting by the phones, praise God, and praying for you, amen, a lefty house of God here not long ago to get it to the broadcast here and left them praying there in the presence of God. And so whatever the need is, you have a need. I don't care what it is, sickness, disease. I don't care what it is, financial. It just doesn't matter. You need to be saved. It just doesn't matter. You can't get through. Amen. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, praise God, they shall. Amen. Praise God be Amen. Save. And I do understand that God can mediate a lot of things through, amen, his people. And um, praise God. And so that's why we want you to uh, get to know. I want to remind you as well, we do have some books, some literature. Uh, praise God to offer to you, to give to you. And uh, praise God, when I get back on the air next time, I'm going to um, just offer some of the titles of the books in which we do have available, that's written by um, our pastor, Leroy Surface, there in Conroe, Texas. And we do have some, some thumb books and, uh, that he gives to us to give freely to those that who would like to receive them. Good word, good message, and it's all scriptural base, praise God. And that's um, the reason why I offer them the most. And um, I don't offer any man's books and uh, praise God, but if it's scripture base, then I'll, I'll recommend those books. But what I love about this is, is that we deem you need to get it so urgently, we're giving it away free. <laughs> praise God. We don't put a price tag on it. We, we're giving it away free. It's for you. If you would like to have it, you can read them books anytime. Simple gospel message in them. Likewise, going here on the live Facebook uh, you can plug in Andre Otis. You should be able to view all of our messages on Facebook. We're getting ready for YouTube. We didn't talk with the cable people. They're coming out, going to upgrade our speed, and uh, we'll be on YouTube pretty soon here. And, uh, and the next thing, TV. So we want you to pray for us and, and that we would be sensitive and, uh, and obey what the Lord has ordained and purpose and intended to get the gospel of God concerning his son, Jesus the Christ, the son of the living God, amen, to as many as God will open the door, praise God, amen, to preach him, amen, to preach Jesus Christ. Well, let's get into the word of God. I'm, I'm stirred here today. Turn your Bibles with me. I do see, amen, uh, some of our folks that have come on live, God bless you, Sister Bush, and God bless my baby girl, and uh, praise God, we, amen, we're excited, and uh, those of you that are coming on later on throughout the day that's going to be revealed, God bless you, we thank God for you, praise God as well. Now, in uh, Romans, the first chapter, in verse number one, Paul, a, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. Now the gospel of God in the second verse, who he which he had promised afar by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. So the gospel of God is the gospel of God's promise. So God promised afar, praise God, amen, by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. The third verse concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, let me tell you something that I think is utmost important. I stay with Scripture. And if I'm in a certain area of Scripture, and the text is speaking of what it's speaking of specifically within that area of Scripture, 
And I'm going to repeat what it says. I'm going to say what it says. I'm not interested in no metaphorical or theological or no uh, revelation or things that people like to take other places of scriptures and compare with certain scriptures and so on and come up with really their thought in the matter. So it's very clear when you leave the scripture like it is that God, by the prophets, prophesied, foretold, praise God, of things concerning his son, Jesus, praise God, who is the Christ, who also is our Lord. Praise God, Jesus, the Son of God, is both the Christ and also the Lord. Praise God. I want to say it one more time. Amen. Because that is very, very vital, very important that that be etched in your soul, in your thoughts, in your heart, in your conscience, in your mind, in your inner parts. Praise God. Because this is the nature of the covenant, the nature, amen, of the fulfilled prophecy and promises of God, amen, within the inner parts and thoughts and hearts, amen, of the people. The gospel of God is what God promised afar by the prophets concerning, amen, in the Holy Scripture, concerning, praise God, His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. This is what our mission is. This is what this preacher's mission is. I don't take advice. I don't care for no other advice from anybody. I've heard from heaven. I know what God has commissioned, praise God, to be done through this preacher. So then, um, concerning his son, Jesus the Christ, our Lord is what the gospel of God is all about. You might go through Genesis to Malachi, find a whole lot of things that may be of importance, maybe of issues, maybe of things that you can use, parallel examples and illustrations and things you might want to use. I think it's a great injustice done to the people that we're preaching this gospel to, that we go into the book of Genesis, through the book of Malachi, among the prophets, and don't bring out, amen, the gospel of God, the promise of God concerning his son Jesus, the Christ, our Lord, praise God, who was prophesied beforehand that was to come. We're doing the people a great injustice, praise God, when we try to go into scripture and find ourselves rather than find Jesus, the Son of God, the Christ, our Lord, in light of all that which pertains to him according to God's promises. Because God promised redemption through him, sanctification through him, washing and cleansing through him, purification through him. Praise God, justification through him, glorification, amen, praise God, will be brought about, made possible through him, through the power of the Holy Ghost that raised him up, praise God, from the dead. And so everything, amen, even our, his return, praise God, and uh, the gathering together of the saints of God, where we would go and be in him, with him, with the Father, throughout all, praise God, amen, praise God, eternity, praise God. And so then, it's vital then, it's vital for us, I mean, let's find what those prophets prophesied in the scripture that God promised to them, Amen. In reference to his son, praise God, Jesus the Christ, our Lord. Glory to God. So then, now the Bible does tell us that concerning his son, Jesus the Christ, our Lord, who was made of the seed of David, praise God, according to, praise God, amen, the flesh. There's a verse of scripture that comes to mind, and uh, the Lord just quickened concerning this matter, the concerning the seed, amen, praise God, of David. There are many, many, many prophecies in the scriptures, especially in Psalms, is where you refine them. Amen. Concerning, praise God, this, this prophecy. Amen. Concerning Jesus. Amen. Praise God, whom our Lord or David's Lord would become. Whom that anointed one, David, spoke about. Amen. Praise God, would come would, and would, uh, uh, would become once he comes. But there's a verse of scripture in the Psalms 55, and uh, 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 I'm sorry, Isaiah 55, praise God, that's in reference to David. That's why my mind went to Psalm 55, but it's in Isaiah, praise God, 55. Ho, oh, everyone that thirsted, come ye to the waters. This is Isaiah 55 and 1. And he that had no money, 
Come ye buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Now, the wine is in typification, praise God, of the new covenant, even in reference to the Holy Ghost. The water is the water that Christ promised at the well, waters, wells of living waters springing up into life. Uh, you go through these, and even in verse, 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 and milk, well, apostle, apostle, uh, Peter told us about desire and sincere milk of the word of God that you may grow thereby. The Christ is our milk. The Christ is our living water. Praise God. And the Christ, praise God, in representing as the wine would represent, praise God, the Holy Ghost, praise God, or even the new covenant, because you don't take new wine and put it in old vats. And he's talking about the new covenant of life, the spirit of life, and praise God, the that Christ is. He is our life, even in reference to, praise God, the Holy Ghost as well. And uh, and so he said, all of this, you buy this, you come and, and drink if you're thirsty without money, praise God, or without price. The implication is that Christ is the price. Praise God. That I purchased all of these things. It is acquisitioned. Praise God. The living waters, the milk, praise God. Amen. Praise God. And the wine. He has acquisitioned this. Praise God for you. Praise God and for I. So, amen. This preacher, I don't care. I'm not asking you to bring your tithes. I'm not, you can't pay for this. You can't buy this. As Simon or Simeon that sought to buy the gift of land on a hand so that the Holy Ghost can come on individuals. I, 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 don't, I don't want your money. God ain't interested in your money. Praise. I didn't say that God does not require the tithes according to faith from the people of God. But you can't buy this with your money. This is the gift of God, living waters, the milk, uh, praise God, of the, of the word of Christ, uh, praise God, and the wine of the new covenant, the Holy Ghost. And you can't buy this with your money. Keep your money. You're going to perish with your money, praise God. But if that's what you would think, he's saying you come without money and without Praise God, price. And so, wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and, and, and you labor for that which satisfied not, and hearken diligently unto me, and eat, and, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Now, there's people pouring money into ministries and trying to buy stuff that ain't even bread. Jesus told us the bread in John the sixth chapter. He said, I am the bread. Praise God of life. You can't buy Jesus Christ. He offered himself to us freely. Praise God. And yet, through a, through a cost that costed him, praise God, his life and his uh, 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 on that cross of Calvary so we could have bread, praise God, of life that he is. He is the bread that had come forth from out of heaven. He's the bread that the Father has sent forth from out of heaven. It's the Logos, the Christ, our Lord, is the bread of life. My flesh, he said, is meat indeed. My blood is drink indeed. Praise God. Prepare of God. He told that bunch in John 6, amen, that came over the Sea of Tiberias that he was translated, praise God, from one side to the other side. The disciples took ship. They came after that feeding of that multitude of 5,000 People got over there and realized that there was no boat for Christ. They saw the disciples getting into their boat, but they got over there and didn't see a boat. Praise God for the Christ, for Jesus, the Son of God. Ain't no big mystery how he got over there. Listen, we're not dealing with, with a man, just a man. We're not dealing with just a prophet. We're not dealing with just somebody God said. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. We're dealing with the Christ, the Lord. Praise God. The Word, the Logos of God Almighty. 
that came from out of who God is. Him in whom God created everything, the water, the stars, the sun, the moon, everything that is in this earth. He created all of it, even the angelical creation. This is who, praise God, that we're preaching on this radio broadcast. And he's our milk, he's our wine. Hallelujah! He's our living waters. He is everything to us that is promised in the word of God, in the prophecies of the scriptures. That milk and that and that wine and that, praise God, and that living water, praise God, and eating of him, praise God, glory to God, is the promise of God, amen, amen, in the scriptures by the prophets of God, amen, concerning his son. That's what Isaiah is I see Christ all up in that verse number one of Isaiah 55 and in Isaiah the second uh, 55th chapter in the second verse people are spending their money for that which is not even bread when Christ himself is the bread laboring for that was satisfied not when they got over there Jesus said Rabbi how you got over here you know he said oh he said, you don't seek me because you saw the miracle. You're seeking me because your stomachs were filled. And people are more interested about their pocketbooks and about what satisfied their selves and their egos and their positions and their authority and, and having the preeminence over people. That's what people are interested in mostly today. He said, labor not for the meat which perish it. Amen. He said, but for that meat that endureth unto life eternal. And he told them, my flesh is the meat which I, the Son of Man, will give unto you. Amen. For him, God the Father has sealed. God has sealed him. God has set the approval on him. He is the fulfillment. Praise God of all the prophecy, the promise of God given to a world. Praise God, he said, for the flesh I give for the life of the world. Amen. So that the world could receive life anew, I give my flesh. Praise God. Hallelujah. And his body was offered on Calvary's cross to sanctify, to amen, to make holy a people, to reconcile a ungodly world and make it anew. Praise God. And he did that. That body offered, Hebrews 10 and 10, to make a people holy, offered one time and for all. Praise God. He's perfected forever them that are sanctified. His body was offered and nailed sin to the cross. And he died and destroyed that devil. Praise God. And all the demons, praise God, that are utilized by that devil. And Christ came out of that grave victorious with a new creation, a reconciled world. And the prophets of God and the saints of God were the first ones to partake, praise God, of this so great salvation, this body of Christ. They ate of his flesh. They're the first ones to eat of his flesh, to drink of his blood, to, amen, to receive of his milk and in pure living water. They're the first ones to partake, praise God, of this. Tell me if Calvary ain't a finished word. Yeah, it's finished. Praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so then come on and, to, and let your soul delight itself in the fatness of the blood and body and pure water and the Holy Ghost of God. Come on and drink. Come on and eat. Praise God. He's ready to feed you. Praise God today. Incline your ear. Come unto me. Hear and your soul shall live. That's the word of God. That's why we tell people, come on, just give us your ear. Listen closely at what's being preached. Don't fight against it. Don't repel against it. Don't tell me you believe this, bud, bud. Get your buds out of it. Don't tell me, yeah, we understand, preacher, what you're saying, bud. No, get that your butts out of it. If you really understand what's being said, then hear what's being said. And stop putting your additives in what you think this preacher is saying. No, I'm saying exactly what the scripture said. Incline your ear, come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live. 
live and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. The sure mercies of David, praise God, is the covenant that he's speaking of here. Praise God, the sure mercies, praise God, of David. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, leader and commander, praise God, to the people. David is dead. David is dead. He didn't rise, amen, and been brought back, amen, to life and walk this earth. He's dead. Now, David is quickened together with Christ and raised up with Christ, and David is in heavenly places in Christ right now. Praise God, but David is dead from this world. You can't talk to him. You can't shake David's hand. You can't speak to David, and David can't speak to you. But I tell you what, one who's came with the short mercies of David, and that's Jesus, the Son of God, amen, according to the flesh was the seed, of, amen, of David, according to Romans 1 and verse number 3, the gospel of God, amen, concerning his son Jesus the Christ, our Lord, who was made of the seed of David, according to, praise God, the flesh. So the seed of David has the show of mercies of David. He's the commander now. He's the leader now. David can't lead you now. David can't command you now. Praise God, but the Christ, he's the commander. He's the leader. Praise God, hallelujah, that will lead you under fountains of living waters, under the milk, under the bread of his body, of his flesh. He's our leader. Follow the lamb, whithersoever the lamb goeth. Praise God. And the heat shall not come upon you. Nothing shall harm you. Praise God as you follow the lamb, whithersoever he goeth. He is the fulfilled covenant of the short mercies of David. Blind both of Maus, praise God himself. Praise God when he heard. He didn't see him. He heard him. But he saw him with the eyes of his heart. Praise God. It was quickened to that blind man that the Messiah, the son of David, is coming down the road. Oh, when God quickens in your heart and you see him, you hear him, you, you, your heart begins to reach out and to comprehend him. And that blind man started crying out, Jesus, thou son of David, praise God, have mercy on me. Uh-oh, he connected the show of mercies, the covenant that God said that he would make with the people, show of mercies. Oh, my God, David is just a proxy that the covenant was made, praise God, but to bring it through his seed, who happens to be Jesus, the son of God, the son of Mary, the stepson of Joseph. Amen. And so then this matter here is, is this blind both of man can hear, he can hear the son of David coming down the road and cries out to him, praise God, and, and begin to call out to him, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Oh, I tell you, he will have mercy on you. Praise God, hallelujah, to fulfill the promises. Praise God, amen, in the covenant that God has said that he would do and engage to accomplish, amen, within the people. Hell, oh, ain't no doubt about it. Ain't no if and buts. Ain't no if and buts about this. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so then the Bible said he cried out. They told him to hush, hush. He cried out the louder. Stop Jesus in his tracks. There's a lot of blind men Jesus passed along that road. There was a lot of lepers Jesus passed along that road. But this moment here, that blind man cried out because he saw in his heart who Jesus, the son, amen, of David was. Amen. He said, what would you have? Lord, did I not receive my sight? He said, well, go ahead on and see. Amen. Touched him, spoke to him. The man received his sight that day because God promised sure mercies. Amen. Praise God by the seed of David. Glory to God. Now, Jesus died. But oh, he was buried. Yep, sure was. And rose again the third day. Hallelujah. The sure mercies. Praise God. The short mercies is still ready. Praise God to be shown towards every need, sin. I don't care. Sickness, disease, backslide state. I don't care who you are. 
He'll be merciful to you, to rescue you, to save you, to deliver you. He's able to do that right now because he lives. Jesus is not dead. Amen. Praise God from this world. Let me get that clear. Amen. He that liveth was dead, but he's alive forevermore. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. He's alive. He's alive. And he lives. If he's not alive, all of us is dead in sin. All of us are preaching is vain. And God has sent us to be false witnesses. And God is a liar if Christ is not raised up from the dead. Oh, but God ain't no liar. God is fulfilled. Praise God. Amen. His promise. And Hebrews the fourth chapter tell us, seeing then that we have such a great high priest that have passed into the heavens. Have you ever known, praise God, hallelujah, of one resurrected from the dead? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. And three days later, Praise God, hallelujah. He arise and ascends and pass, says praise God, into the heavens. Oh, glory to God. I know men who claim that, but I tell you, this is the firstborn son of God who died, who died. Praise God, it was buried and rose again the third day and was ascended up. Passed into the heavens uh, to the right hand of God Almighty. And there obtained eternal redemption with his blood for us. I said eternal, praise God, redemption. And there he sits at the right hand, amen, of God. Ready to fulfill this verse of scripture. Who is the commander now? He's the leader now. He's Lord of Lords now. He's King of Kings now. Hallelujah, the first and the last, the Alpha and Omega. Praise God, the root, praise God, glory to God, hallelujah, of Jesse, the daddy of David, and the, and the offspring, praise God, amen, of David, before his daddy and after, praise God, David, amen, Jesse's son, amen, boy, you put that one together, hallelujah, this is the one I'm talking about, can no other man experience ever come close to relation to what happened to the Son of God. He died and was rose. And praise God, it was his. Woo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And was arose and went to the right hand of God and obtained eternal, praise God, redemption. Oh, hallelujah! Oh, hallelujah! Thou, behold, thou shalt. Call a nation that thou knowest not, and, and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God and for the Holy One. Praise God of Israel, for he had glorified. Praise God, thee. seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. Then to our God, for he will abundantly pardon him. For my thoughts are not as are your thoughts, and my ways are not your ways. Saith the Lord, as the heaven are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your yours and my thoughts then your thoughts as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and return it not tither but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud and it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater so shall my word be that going forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Uh oh, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. Christ, Logos, is the word that proceeded forth out of the mouth of God. Notice what he said about the rain. The rain come down, the snow fall from heaven, and it don't return. It return it not tither to heaven, but it water the earth, it make it to bring forth, it bud, and it, and it may say, hallelujah. That it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. He says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me. But uh-oh, it speaks of the word coming out of God. 
and returning back to God, but it won't return to God void. See, the rain comes down, but it don't return back to heaven. The snow come down, but it don't return back to heaven. But the word, the word of God go, has gone forth, and the word of God has come returned back to God. That is the word, that is the logos that came from out of God, praise God, and took on flesh and blood, amen, and went to Calvary, nailed sin there, purged sin there, and was quickened the third day, and returned back to God, hallelujah, with his own blood, and obtained eternal redemption for us. That's talking about the Christ. That's talking about Logos. Praise God. God's word does and did return back to him. And he's talking about the Christ. He's talking about Jesus. It's a prophecy of the resurrection. Amen. Of Jesus Christ after that God. Did. Amen. And sent him and, and made of a woman under the law that he would redeem us from the curse of the law. That we would receive the adoption of sons. And because your sons God has sent for the spirit of his son into our hearts and, and heaven must receive him again. Amen. At the restitution of all things. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because Christ does walk in the midst of his church. He said, where two or three gather together in my name, they're mine in the midst. Not because you said you gather together in J-E-S-U-S, -S, but praise God, it's the name of the J-E-S-U-S. Which is his character and his authority. Jesus Christ is don't come to every church service on a Sunday. Jesus Christ is not in the midst of every church service on a Sunday night. Amen. He's not a part of every denomination or non-denomination. He's not a part of, uh, of every person who profess and claims, uh, praise God, to be somewhat. But oh, I tell you, hallelujah, he's alive and well. He told John the apostle, you tell all seven of them churches, uh, amen, that I walk in the midst of them all. I know their works and I know their thoughts and I know who they they are and who they say they are and they are not. I know praise God, amen precious Savior, amen their state and their condition oh I tell you hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lamb of God, he's alive folks, he ain't dead, he's alive hallelujah Glory to God. We preach a resurrected Christ crucified. We preach a, a resurrected, praise God, Lamb of God that was slain. He's in the midst of the throne of God right now, this present moment. They're singing, worthy is the Lamb. Look at this here. That was slain, but he's alive. You have redeemed us. We sing that to him who was slain, but he has redeemed us. Praise God from out of every tongue, kindred, nation, and people, and made us to be a kingdom of priests unto God Almighty. Amen. That we reign in this earth in his rule, in his reign, and in his authority. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so all of these things here, when Christ, the word of God, amen, took on flesh, went to Calvary, died, and accomplished the work in the earth, and heaven bared record of it. It's finished. Redemption is finished. He made an end to sin. It's finished. He finished the transgression. It's finished. He made reconciliation for iniquity. It's finished. He's brought in everlasting righteousness. It is finished. And he's sitting down at the right hand of the throne of God Almighty, ready to appear to you, ready to come to you, if you repent and believe this gospel. And call on him, praise God, in light of this gospel. And so praise God, hallelujah, to the Lamb. And so this matter here in this uh, Isaiah 55, I love this. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return into me void. Amen. But it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. That's what the Christ said when he came in the flesh in Hebrews, the 10th chapter, and verse number 5. 
Wherefore, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offerings and burnt offerings for sin, thou wouldest not, but a body has thou prepared me. See, the word is not just something spoken or said all the time. Amen. Praise God. But praise God. The word speaks of Logos, praise God, who was God and spoke what was spoken, amen, to the prophets of God. And so then in reference to what was spoken was in reference to the word, Logos, amen, that was to come in the flesh and then return back to God, amen, having accomplished the redemption that God has sent him, amen, that pleased the Father, amen, concerning so here in Hebrews, the 10th chapter and verse 5, wherefore when he came into the world, he said, sacri he said, he said, who said that? He who came into the world. That means he existed before he came into the world. Hallelujah. Glory. He existed. That's Logos. That's the word that came forth from out of God. Came and took on a body prepared, amen, for him of God. When he came to the world, he said, Sacrifice and offerings thou wouldest not, but a body has thou prepared me in burnt offerings and sacrifices for, for, for sin. Amen. Amen. That thou hast had no pleasure. God didn't have pleasure in goats and bulls that could never take away sin, according to Hebrews 10 and 4. Oh, but the Christ came, the word came from out of God, went to Calvary, and, and when he came, he said, a body you prepared me. You didn't have pleasure in burnt offerings and bulls because they could never please you because they couldn't take away sin. But I'm come. Okay, man, I'm come. Christ said, I'm come. Then said, I, lo, I come in the volume of the book that is written to me to do thy will, O God. Praise God. So then he took away sin, nailed it to his cross, did what blood of goats and blood of bulls couldn't do. Then said he, Lord, I come to do thy will. Oh God, he took away the first, that's the sacrifice of goats and bulls and blood of animals that could not take away sin. He did it at Calvary and he established his sacrifice, his blood, that redemption, praise God, hallelujah, that he has obtained as the way of sanctification by the which will we are sanctified sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Every priest standing daily ministering and offering off the time the same sacrifice we can never take away sin. That's why they keep telling you got to crucify the old man every day. That's why they keep telling you got to put self to death. That's why they keep telling you got to die. You got to die. You got to die. Listen to me, folks. Christ did that once at Calvary. Amen. Once at Calvary, he took away sin, took away the old man. He did that once again, brought about sanctification. And the 14th verse, for my, for my one offering, he had perfected forever them that are sanctified. Everybody else is standing daily, offering the same old services, coming back and forth church every Sunday, every Sunday evening, wherever they go, and never free from sin. But this man, after.